Oh, I think I might have found something. So this is the data sheet, or the actual data sheet for the chip, which, as you can see, is in Chinese. Um, oh, where did I see it? Where's it gone? Uh, it was on one of the timing diagrams. I think it's, is it that one? Okay, oh, let's find it. No, not that one. It was the one comparing the two clocks. Ah, so here we go. So the time between the two clocks. So that's the that's the shift clock. This one, oh, this one is the shift clock. This one is the register clock. So this time here, TSW. Uh, sorry, TSU needs to be. Um, where is it? TSU. TSU, there we go. Shift clock to R clock. 20 nanoseconds. I think it's 20, I'm pretty sure that's 20 nanoseconds. And I don't think we've got 20 nanoseconds. Uh, just let me, uh, let me hook up another probe. Right, okay. So what we have is yellow is the in... Oh, I can't remember now. Yeah, yellow is the inverted clock um dark blue is the triple inverted shift clock uh r clock okay so let's see get rid of that let's see what that does <laughs> right so what i'm interested in is what is the delay between channel one and channel four? Oh my god that is like nothing. Uh, let's get the cursors. Uh, let's put it on manual. Okay, so that's about. Oh, missed it. No, missed it again. Okay, so that's about. Oh, that is half. Oh, that's maybe not. Maybe that's a AX to BX. 24 nanoseconds. And it says it's got to be. Hmm. Okay, maybe not then. <laughs> I thought I found something. But that does look to be over 20 nanoseconds. Well, I'm just playing around with the cursors again. Um, it is quite close because it's showing uh, 20, 23 nanoseconds. But it's, uh, I don't know. I don't want to slow it down too much because it starts causing issues. Okay, more research. Well, I think I've got that as good as I can get it. And it is, it's like 27 nanoseconds. So that's... Uh, that's more than 20 so that does appear to be okay okay right just going to build another one which is here so i'm just building another one which is basically a copy of the smd one i've built just so that i can test things out i've got a, a baseline basically i'll uh, skip to the end well so this is the new one which i built um is it on yeah it's on okay so if i press I'm not getting any oh <laughs> didn't put the resistors in oh god one moment okay as if by magic the resistors are in right let's turn it on okay so now we have something let's press a you see now that's correct because <laughs> that is one c where's my sheet so right on my sheet you can see uh number one so i'll press number one. Oh, you can't see the keyboard oh, let's move it up a bit oh dear right so i'll press this one number one so i'll press number one and it is zero oh, can you see zero 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 one which is zero 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 one zero one one zero zero one one zero Right, let's wire them both up. Okay, we've got them uh, wired up. Um, I've got the, so the, the keyboard goes into this one and I've got the yellow, oh, hang on, let's switch to, okay, so we've got yellow and blue at the top. Uh, you can't see, okay, stop it, stop it. Right, so, You've got the blue, I've put the yellow and blue 
together um, basically because they are um, the clock. So one of them's the shift clock and the other one is the register clock and the register clock is a few nanoseconds behind. Um, number three, uh, the purple one, uh, which is you know, purple, we're pink purple, is the Q0 or QA output of the first shift register on, oh, my hand's in the way, on this top one, which is the one we've got the problem with. And the dark blue is the QA or Q0 in, uh, output of the bottom one, which we've just shown to be working. Oh, I've forgotten. I need to put some, uh, oh, oh, I've run out of, um, run out of black ones. Let's turn the power off. I need to join the mother horse together. Right, there we go. Let's turn the power on. So everything should come on. Right. Uh, let's, have I got that plugged in the right place? Oh, no, I haven't. Oh. Right, this, I've got this one should be plugged in here. Cause I, and that one should be plugged in there. What I noticed was that the clock was inverted. Oh, so I should have said it wasn't inverted. Right, there we go. Right, let's make that a bit. Let's see if we can get that on the screen. Should be able to get one section on the screen. Um, oh, the trigger's off because it's on, it's on rising edge. Okay. All right, let's move it over a bit. Yeah. So what I'll I'll put a highlight on it. But as you can see on the pink trace, the the first spike shouldn't be there, <laughs> and I don't know why it is. Because on the bottom one, it's correct. But on the top one, it's not. So I think it's, there must be something. I've been through, I found the original, um, uh, the original um, data sheet, which I think I've showed, um, but it's all in Chinese. So I, I can't read it. I can gather like, the, bit, the, the, the bits and pin numbers and stuff like that and the timings, but you know, I can't, I can't read anything. But I don't know why. Um, I don't know why this one, these ones, where the extra pulse is coming from, because I can't see it. So I'm going to um, pull these out and then basically just check all the soldering to make sure I haven't bridged anything or anything like that. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to do that. I've got to make some room on the desk first. Okay, I've just swapped these round. I've checked them, and I can't find no. There's no shorts or anything like that on these two. But I've just swapped them round just to see if if that would make any difference. And if I press it, you can see it doesn't. That extra one is still there, and I don't know where it's coming from. Okay, so. I, I'm I'm at a loss. If anyone knows, let me know. But I'm at a loss why this the extra pulse is coming from this one. Um, so what I'm going to do, I've got some SOP 16 ones. Uh, what's that? Oh, that's a flip flop. Um, so yeah, I've got some 595 SOP 16. So I'm going to solder two of those onto here and then basically just replace those two and then see if it works. Okay, so, right, let's get the keyboard back, it was in my way, right, so the two new ones, um, they are SOP16, so just, just done them, they look good, so the plan, is that power off, yeah, so all I'm going to do is pull these ones out, because, because they're 595s, they should be just dropping replacements, and see if we've still got the same error. Yeah, I'll put yellow on it so I knew which one to which. So that's the new ones. Let's plug the keyboard back in. That should be everything. Let's uh, switch to 
scope. Right. So same setup as before. Um, one, two, three, four. Yeah. So the yellow and blue, yellow and cyan, light blue, are the two clocks, and purple and blue are the data the QA output of this chip and this chip. So let's see what happens. Press A. And what do you know? It works. There's no extra the data inputs are the same. There's no extra signal on this one. So I'm I'm gonna have a play with these. I've got four of them set up, but I'm gonna have a play with them and they're also on here. But I'm definitely gonna have a play, see if I can figure out why. I've been trying to find um an English data sheet because the only one I can actually find is in Chinese. I'll put a link to them in the description in case anyone else is interested. Okay, so the plan then will be redo this. Um, and it does seem that I have wired these outputs, I've wired them up backwards. And I was going through the edit history in KiCad and when I first put them in, I rotated them, which is why they're in the wrong place. Uh, never mind. Um, okay, so I'm going to change these footprints to these ones, because I've got loads of these, the SOP16s. And then basically just reroute all of the, um, for the, all the tracks for the LED and for these headers at the end. I might have to move them over a bit because these these footprints are a little bit bigger than these ones. All right, okay, well, when I get them back, it'll be, oh, fourth time lucky. <laughs> oh, I'm having good fun though. More shenanigans. Right, so, let's move point up. I've got the camera a bit closer. The picture's not, not as good as I'd like. I've tried, I tried switching the camera to four K mode, and it still won't make any difference. It still it looks exactly the same. Okay, so we've got the clock. So the clock is doing the shift clock. Is that? Let me make sure I've got that right. Yeah, so it's doing the pin eleven, which is the shift shift register clock input so that's the bit that moves the the stuff as i would imagine um so then for the register clock on both of them so these are the ones that we've got the issues with uh these are the new ones that i tested earlier with the yellow bottoms um so the shift clock is on this this button here so the middle button this one and then the data input is on this one so i press this it just sends a, a one in or more than one depending on how fast it's going so it's not behaving <laughs> i'll show you what i mean uh where's the power it's uh yeah it's it's behaving well sorry this one these two are behaving exactly as how as i would expect but this one isn't these um the, the one i've got the chinese data sheets for it just is not um right let's switch power right so you can see the clock but can you see that this one the the, the clock's gone through and cleared all the registers which i wouldn't think would happen because the um register clock is that right register clock storage register clock isn't running it's only the shift register yeah that's right yeah i think i'll read the date sheet again in a minute but this one is not doing anything so this one it's it's got um yeah it's not it's just basically i think one two three four five six seven 
Well, the last one's missing. So if I press data, so I send a one to the uh, serial input, you can see it rolls down here, which is what I would expect. But on here, everything just disappears. So that this is what I would expect to happen. Just doing that, and then that's how it works. Um, but if you press the shift, sorry, not shift. If you press the storage register clock, it gets, I don't know, it's on here, it's, I don't know why this one's behaving like that. I'm going to lift it up. I'll blur this bit together. I don't know why it's doing that. Because I've been looking at the... Um... So this is the Chinese one. This is the actual timings. Um, so we've got the serial input is... Is that, oh, hang on, let me make sure. Serial SER is, well, that's pin 14, which is a serial input. I'm assuming that all the pinouts are the same because on this is the, this is the English one. So pin 14 is serial data input. So so it's high, so it's high, it drops to low. Oh, hang on. Maybe it's... Because the register clock... So this is the, the normal clock. It just keeps going. But it's only doing it when it's low. Oh, hang on. Let me change... Uh, hang on. Let me put that. Let me put that one in there. So that changes the data to default high. Right. So we've got a one going in there and a one going in there. So if I press data, I'm definitely doing something wrong. Because that's. Why is that not? So you can see it. Uh, yeah, so we can see it. But it should be triggering all the time. Oh, hang on. So if I do. Hold that down, do shift. Ah, oh, there's a short happening when I do that. So when I press both of those together, there's a short. So I must have a wiring problem. Let's turn the power off. So if I do it, hang on, so if I do that one, that doesn't do anything. Ah, so when I'm pressing this one, I'm getting a short. Hmm, okay, so that explains why, or hopefully explains why there's something wrong with the shift register. So this, let's just make sure these, so these are all the resets. So they all go to pin... 10 does that go pin 10 yeah pin 10 pin 10 pin 10 right so where does this one go so what oh, not that one this one so that's going to pin 13 i think yeah 13 and then oh hang on where's What's this one? It's 
So that one's going on. Right, so that one, is that pin 13? I can't see. Right, so pin 13. Well, I think this, this one, ah, oh, that one's in the wrong one. That one's, oh, that's in, no, it's that one. That one was in ground. So that should be, aha, uh -huh, so that should be in there. And then that one goes in there. Pin 13. Aha. Uh -huh. So I make it. Okay. Oh, hang on. No, I need to change. Change data back to low. Okay, so if I press data. Yeah, I don't think I can press that fast enough. So if I hold that down, well, no, because it won't pulse, will it? But you're supposed to be able to connect these clocks together, so let me try that. So let me plug this one into the actual clock there. And then... Right, so that that's the behaviour that I would expect is this one. But why is this one not doing it? So if I change that to high and then pulse low. Why is that not going to zeros? Yeah, see, this this is what I would expect from shift registers, but this is not doing it, and I, I don't get why. Perhaps that one that does need the this the <coughs> the delay, or a more strict delay, because I notice um, in this one, uh, in the date sheet for this one, it does say, um, uh, where are we? If both clocks are connected together, the shift register will always be one clock pulse ahead of the storage register. So it looks like it might be sort of internally delaying it. So this one doesn't need a delay, whereas this one doesn't have that feature, maybe. Because... Yeah, so this one needs a delay. Um, let's, let's, what do I need to, oh, I'm running, I'm running out. Look, let's get, get in bare. Uh, oh no, I need a longer one. Let's, uh, let's get, is that long enough? Uh, oh, don't plug that in there. Oh no. <laughs> Well, I'll just plug that in there to keep it. Right, let's get the. Let's make it. Let's get one of these. These. Oh, these long ones. Right, so I want to come from there. I'm going to do the clock thing through the um, inverter. So put it in there. Ah, no. So. That's the output, so it's the, oh god, I can't remember, hang on, so it gets inverted, and then inverted back again, so it needs to go, uh, this one, oh, yeah, so it needs to go in this one, right, that's what I would expect, so this one, this one, it's got to be something to do. Um, oh, what have I done with it? 
Oh, hang on. I think I've got one of them here. So I think on here, it's got to be something to do with the way I've got the clock set up because that's working. Yeah, so we can see, we can see the pulses. Right, let me just check. So I've got one on the clock. Let me change. Um, where's the blue one? Where's the blue one? It's this one. So let me change this blue one. I want to see what this clock here is to see if it's any if it's any different to what we saw when we compared them last time. All right. So I want to compare. So let's get rid of channel two and channel three. So I want to compare channel one to channel four. So let's change channel one to, is that the right way? No, wrong way. Oh no, it is the right way. Right, so they're both on two volts. Let's center them both. And then zoom in. Yeah, see, they're not that different. But I think it might be that... Um, should be able to set the tracking. Um, I want it about the same level. What height is that? 2.2 .2 volts? Oh. Yeah, see, that's only 12 nanoseconds. So maybe it is, it's the, on the board, I'll have to check the data sheet of those inverters, these inverters here, yeah, because maybe they're too fast. Although, I think when we was, t uh, if I remember, it was 20 something, wasn't it, 27 nanoseconds? But this is the behavior that I would expect. So if I plug that into there, that fills it up. Yeah, so this is the behavior I would expect. Okay, right, so now that setup works. <laughs> right, so this setup works, so I'm gonna not touch that so then i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is this is an older one so i'm gonna get the the other ones out the box and then set it up like this one and then go through and do the same measurements but i think i might have to cut some traces especially to the leds because one of the because they're in the wrong mind you it should still light up so yeah, even though they're in the wrong order, they should still light up. Well, I should be able to should be able to do this. So I press a button, and it just it should just work. Right. Okay. Couldn't see it for looking. <laughs> right. So we need. Right. What am I doing? What am I doing? Okay, I need to put this in somewhere. So let's put let's put it in here. Just that looks well it looked like it was touching then. Is it touching? No, oh, it looked like it. Right, let's put it back. Mind you, I do have the wrong glasses on. <laughs> Crap, oh, that's better. Right, so we've got the data. I just need to do the clock with the, oh, let's get that one. So the clock will be this one, and I can plug that. Uh, can I squeeze that in there? Yep. Oh, that—that that, is that the clock? Yeah. 
All right, let's plug that in there. Right, so now if I turn it on, right, so we get all the LEDs and they all disappear. So if I... Aha, uh -huh, see, so there must be something wrong on here on this one because this is working or this is doing what I would expect it to do. So I hold it down. Oh. Well, why did it do that? That, that, that. I'll have to watch that back, but I'm sure that worked then. I'm holding it. Oh, there we go. It's got to be something to do with the um, with that clock, that shift clock. Um, let's do. So we've got. So I've already got this set up on the scope. So if I take this one, I'll take this one. So this is, uh, oh, that's yellow. And the blue one, which is this one. Right, so I did solder. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but I did solder some uh, female headers on there to make it a bit easier to stick stuff in. Right, so this one has to be the clock, which is that one. And then this one, that's the shift clock. Oh, let me switch back to the, uh, oh, you can see it. Uh, let me switch back to this main scope screen. Can you, oh, I think that's the problem. Because the actual, uh, let's see if I can move, can I move that with a finger? Yeah. I think that's the problem. It's four nanoseconds. Those shift rate, those um, inverters that are on here, uh, these these ones here, I think they're just too fast. Damn. Damn. So how can I do that? How can I fix that? How can I slow it down? Hmm. Let me find the data sheet from. Oh, okay, so I found the. Uh, uh, where is it? Let's switch to it. There we go. Right, I found the data sheet. Um, one thing that that leaps out at me is that we're running it at five volts here, or four point seven. So it comes in there, and the propagation delay is two point seven. Uh, nanoseconds and it's going through one two three so yeah it's hmm. damn but what we could try is lowering the voltage so it might be I don't know if the other chips on there will run let me find the where's the date sheet for this one so, oh, let's, so let's switch back. So the power for this, this will run at 3.1 volts. Oh, oh, the scope's in the way. So this is the data sheet for this one here. So it will run at 3.1 to 6.5 volts. So maybe we could just lower the voltage. I might have to change the resistors, but I think I put 330s on there. Um, let me just check to see if they're... Yeah, so they're 330, 330 resistors. So it is possible. I don't know what about the um, PS2 keyboard, though. I don't know if that's going to light 3 volts. <coughs> but let's see if we can get this to work first. Right, so the yellow one is the clock. And... That one is there. Okay. Right, so on the power supply, I'm going to drop it. What? What's the next threshold? 3.3. .3. Mm, so it's only, it's only 
point four of a micro uh, nanosecond. So let's drop it to four volts. Hmm. Why don't we turn it down while it's running? What well, I did notice, okay, so if I do a data, no, it might be that the, the propagation on it is not, not good enough. It's still, it's still only four nanoseconds. Let's drop the voltage a bit more. Can I, why won't it let me drop it? I can turn it up, but I can't, oh, there it goes. Let me change it to 3.3. .3. Oh, it didn't like that at all. Let's see what them inverters are. Oh, I didn't wasn't look to see what the um where are we? Oh no, operating voltage range, one point six five to five point five. So that should be fine. So why is it Oh, where's the trigger? I'll get it to stabilize. Seems to be. There's a button. Let's push. Yeah, don't. It's not liking it. I think this is not liking it. I don't think it can power everything here for, for 3.3. Um. Let's get the keyboard. Where's the keyboard? Ah, uh, what did I do with? Oh, this is this is the other one we was testing with. Okay, let's turn this power off. Uh, let's unplug uh, one of these. Right, so it's only powering that now. Okay, let's turn the cursors off. And take it out a little bit. I don't think I don't think that's enough power for the keyboard. Oh hang on, what was that? Just saw Oh, we are seeing something. Oh, I can't. I just saw some lights flash. Oh, something's touching. Oh, I know what I haven't done. Um, this one, this one. I didn't plug the grounds in, did I? Oh, that goes in there. Right, that's the grounds plugged in. Right, it should actually do something. It should show us something now. No. I don't think it's enough power. Let's try um let's try four volts. Four point zero. Let's try four volts. Oh, that look I I saw something then, but there's nothing there's nothing on here. Uh, if I do, I think the PS2 keyboard does need 5 volts. Oh no. You, oh yeah, because I'm triggering on number 1. Okay, let's move this up a bit. Let's trigger on oh, about 2, yeah, 2 volts ish, that would be enough. 
put it on normal mode so I can actually so it stops. Okay, so we are getting a signal. I think them clocks. Uh, let's put them together again. Oh, wrong one's that one. Right, where's the let's do the cursors again? Cursors. Track. Oh, we need to track there. What's that? Oh, two point two. Let's bring that one. That one's right. So there's tracking. About what I think the level should be. But it's five point two nanoseconds. <laughs> it's not long enough. Damn. Never even occurred to me to check the speed of them. Because, you know, I like these ones and these these ones here. It's just you've used the, used the every time I've used the 595, they just work. Um, one thing, I'm just thinking, one thing I could do to test it would be to remove that inverter there and then take it out of there put it into a breadboard and then run it through one of these because these are quite these should be in comparison these should be quite slow because at least then that will prove my theory of it's the propagation on those inverters is too fast okay i'm going to do that let's see see how i get on All right, so this is the one that's got to come out. I can't, I don't think I could, I'm not going to risk use it, using the um, hot air gun for the minute because otherwise I'm going to melt these two um, connectors. So let's see if I can get it off with a bit of wick and wick and a prayer. Oh, it's moving. Oh, there we go. Oh, right. Let's put that. Well, I didn't break. Oh, did I break the pads? I think I did. I think I might have done. Right. Um, let's put that in a safe place. I'll put that in the corner there. Uh, what do I need? <coughs> Need some wire. No, I don't know if these are going to be. These might be a bit. They might be a bit thick. Let me turn that off. Yeah, these might be a bit thick. Okay. Right. So this one. This one is the input. And this one is the output. Oh, can you see that? I've just melted. I've melted them. I thought I could smell burning plastic. Oh, that's huge. All right, let me see if I can just get that on. Don't touch anything else. Don't like that. No, I don't like that. It's too close. I don't think I've got any. Oh, that's bow. That's bow. Right, can I make that stand up? Oh, I think I've just broke the pad. I saw the I saw the board moving then. Okay, let's do this. This one should be alright because it's not close to anything else. Okay, that's one. Should be able to get away without tinning them. They should pop into the breadboard. Right. That should add quite a bit of a delay. 
let's take that round there just to make sure they're not touching hopefully they're not yeah I think the pad has definitely lifted up off there so we should notice a difference is that not just noticed I might have just blown it up because it was running the wrong way it's because I usually have these up the other way right oh my theory was correct Oh, it is nice when you solve a problem. Well. Oh. They are very bright. <laughs> Let's uh, let me try turning the voltage down. Is that still bright? Just ch just try changing it to 3.3 .3 to see if that lowers it a bit. Yeah, it does. Um, right, so if I press A, A is 1C. And on here, I don't know how, that's not going to be very easy to see, is it? Yeah. Should have put 1K resistors on there, but, well... It's in reverse because it's wired up wrong, but it is uh, zero, zero, zero. Oh, oh hang on. No, because they're wired up wrong. But it is working now. It's just wired up wrong. Let's see if I can turn the lights off. See if that makes any so it makes it easier to see. Yeah, they're too bright. Yeah, I think they're well. Success. So, I'm thinking what I need to do is just add more reverse. <laughs> I do have, um, where are we? I might change those, because uh, I've got three inverters there, but I do have, um, where are we? I think this one. Yeah. So this one, this one is, um, what is it? VSOP 14. So I think that's got six inverters on it. So yeah, I can use that instead. Because that should, I'll check the data sheet, but that should slow it down enough. Well, oh, okay. Success. Sort of. <laughs> i got to admit, though, I did enjoy that. That was good fun. Um, yeah, I just look forward to when... Because it does mean I won't have to change the footprints to the other one of these, so I can keep these ones, and then just change those three inverters into a, a single six chip, which I will try on a breadboard before I send it off to get manufactured but yeah I enjoyed looking at, I, I enjoyed doing that uh, next video will likely be well the next one for this series will likely be when I get when I've got time to redesign it and get them back but yeah that was good fun thanks for watching